Hey guys, what's up? It's Monkle Zonkey, and welcome to my fight kiln guide. Um, in this guide, I'm going to do an entire wave by wave, kind of step by step, just leading you through the fight kiln. So, if this is your first time doing the fight kiln, this guide is going to be really, really helpful for you. Um, I would not recommend this guide if you have already done the fight kiln several times and you're looking for ways to do it faster. This is just a guide on how to get you your first or possibly even second Tokar Cal or even if you want to try the kiln out for onyxes but you don't have a whole lot of experience with it so in this guide i'm going to show you how to like take minimum damage um, for the most part no food is really needed um, and i do recommend to bring a yak with food in it just in case you mess up or anything but f before we go into the caves and really start with the guide itself we're quickly going to go over our gear um, one thing I do want to mention is in the video I will be wearing slightly different gear than I am now and that's because I decided to make this part after I recorded the actual kiln itself so I can modify anything to let you ha guys have a better experience than I did. Um, so first of all I do have dread nips in the video. Don't bring them, they're a waste of your time. Second of all I was not wearing the Tokol Zo in the video that you will see. Um, I would recommend to do that. And I also have a superior scrimshot of vampirism here just if you want a little bit more healing. And you may notice that I am wearing obsidian armor. If you don't know what this armor is, or if you know what it is, but you don't really know how to get it, or if you know how to get it, but you're not very good at it, um, I do have a guide on how to get the obsidian armor and how to do the fight cauldron. That guide will be in the description below. So I'd recommend to check that out. The obsidian armor basically makes the kiln just absolute easy mode. It only takes about half an hour to get to. You do have to have completed the quest, the Brink of Extinction. But if you have completed the quest and this is your first ever fight kiln, I would recommend to get the obsidian armor before you actually start the kiln itself. So other than the obsidian armor, I have a max cape. You can switch that out for a skill cape. I have Drygores. You can use any kind of chaotic weapon. It'll work just fine. Um, obviously, the Tokol Zil, you'll have that if you've done the quest to access this area. I would recommend to bring penance because um, it means you won't really need hardly any prayer during the whole caves, um, but you can bring vampirism instead if you want. Uh, don't forget any bolts and amulet of fury. You can obviously wear... Um, well, I'd recommend the Amulet of Fury because it's the best tribrid amulet, and you do tribrid here. Um, so you want a range and a magic switch. I have a Royal Crossbow. If you want to bring Chaotic Crossbows, I have those too. I just brought this for the inventory space. Um, you pretty much three or four hit all the monsters in the fight kiln anyway, so it doesn't matter all that much. I have a Chaotic Staff. I use Mage against all the Jads. You can use Range against the Jads. You can use Melee against the Jads. It doesn't matter that much. They don't have very much HP. They're very, very easy to kill. Um, so whatever combat style, mage and ranger are a bit easier because you don't have to worry about protecting from all three combat styles, but it's really just up to you. And then I have four overload flasks um, and four renewal flasks. I myself only use two overloads and two renewals. However, if this is your first time you want to take it really, really slow and want to absolutely make sure that you get it right, um, I would recommend to bring more. And then I have these prayer flasks here. Again, with the penance ore, I won't really be using these and some food. Um, I could do a kiln just in this gear itself, however, uh, if you want to summon a yak and fill that full of food and prayer, go ahead and do that. Um, if you feel pretty confident in your abilities and you watch this guide and you think, hey, that looks pretty easy, I could do that, then you could also bring like a steel titan or a unicorn or something like that. Um, it's really just up to you, so if you bring unicorn, remember to bring scrolls. Um, remember to bring a rune pickaxe. Um, I actually tried one time to do the kiln, and because I read a guide and it said the pickaxe on the tool belt works against the dills, it does not. So make sure that you have a pickaxe in your inventory for the dill waves. And uh, also a super restore to restore your summoning to summon another yak. Uh, don't forget runes, and of course a mage and range obsidian helmet switch. Now that you're all geared up and ready to go, uh, let's go in the fight kiln and start the process of getting you your to first or maybe second Tokar Cal. Hey guys, I am back and it's time to start the fight kiln. So we're going to do an entire wave by wave um, kind of approach here. And I'm going to show you every single wave all the way up to the fight. And I, I will show you the fight itself as well. Um, so first of all, when you just start out, um, a lot of people suggest to start under the L-shaped rock. Um, but if you have obsidian armor and you've been here before and you just basically have really high stats, you're really not going to take much damage. So if you are a low level, um, then that's fine you can start under the l-shaped rock i will show you 
where that is in a couple waves here. Um, so after the first wave, the invulnerability crystal spawns. There's the L-shaped rock there. You can just start here every wave, and it'll lure everything perfectly. But it's a bit faster just to be out in the open and attack stuff immediately. So that invulnerability crystal, um, I would highly recommend to take that because it makes the double jad fight later in the cave much faster. Um, I unfortunately was not able to use the invulnerability crystal during the double jad fight, and you'll see what happened. Um, why I was not able to use that, but anyway, um, I would recommend for you to take that crystal and one crystal spawns every two waves I'll tell you which one spawns at every two waves so you don't have to worry about it um, So every wave kind of has like a theme the first nine waves are centered around or the first ten waves are centered around kind of the ranged enemies um, then the next ten waves are kind of centered around the mage enemies and then the next 10 waves are centered around the melee enemies and that restoration crystal drops after wave 3 do not take that trust me just leave it on the ground I took every crystal during this fight because I wanted to showcase what they all did um, and what and figured out for myself whether they're worth it or not do not even touch the restoration crystal just trust me on that one um, so after that we're on wave 4 now uh, you don't have anything to worry about until wave 9 there's only one wave that I really had trouble with, and you'll see that it's one of the last waves coming up, so it's not going to be for a while. Um, and of all the clips, other than the Jad fights and the Dill wave, are sped up 250%, um, so it is going to be a bit faster because it would really suck to watch the entire fight killing at normal speed. Since I'm not wearing Void, and since I'm not a real pro at fight killing or anything, uh, it did take me a while. But there are first Dill spawns um, on wave seven i believe it is wave six and um we the strategy on how to kill these things is i use my dread nips on it they really aren't necessary at all you really don't need dread nips for these dills and the uh, magic crystal spawns there um again you can take it if you want it speeds up the jad fights a little bit but if you don't have the inventory space or anything don't worry about it um it's not really a big deal at all the dills, you just need a pickaxe to attack them. The pickaxe in your tool belt does not work, as I mentioned during the gearing up portion of the video. So you are going to need a physical pickaxe in your inventory. If you have a dragon pickaxe, that's fine. Um, I worked just fine with a rune pickaxe. I was able to break all their shells by like the third or fourth hit. So even a rune pickaxe works pretty well against the dills. You really do not need a dragon pickaxe. And if you use abilities on them, it's a bit faster. The first time I ever did a fight kiln in the EOC, I thought you could not use abilities on the dills, but you can, and it helps break their shells a bit faster when you have a pickaxe equipped. Um, but anyway, so we're getting pretty close to the first jad. I believe this is wave eight. Yeah, and then uh, wave nine is the way wave before jad um on wave 10 there's a jad on wave 20 there's a jad on wave 30 there's a jad uh, and then on wave um 34 35 and 36 there are jads so those are the only waves that you really got to watch out for if you're not very good at jad but you do got to realize the jads in the fight kiln are much much easier than the jad in the fight caves because they don't have healers and they have a lot less health so they're a lot easier to kill than the Jad in the uh, fight caves is, but you still got to prey on them. I missed um, a couple prayer switches because of that stupid restoration crystal. We'll get into that later. When I said do not pick up the restoration crystal, trust me, just do not touch it. Um, it does not do what it's supposed to do. The restoration crystal is supposed to restore your life and prayer to maximum. It did not do that, for one. And for two, it did not let me use any other crystals for the rest of the fight. I don't know if that's a glitch um, or what, but I do know that it did not heal. Um, there's the strength crystal there. Don't worry about it. Don't pick it up unless you really want to melee the jads or something. Um, I guess you can use it against Harakin. It's kind of nice to use it against the boss, Harakin, whatever you want to say. Um, it will speed up the boss a little bit because the boss fight takes a long time. Not because he's hard, but just because he has a lot of health and he's... He runs around from you a lot. So this is the first Jad fight. I was, I guess, just making sure that I had my prayers and everything all ready. But if you know how to do Jad, it's quite easy. Um, just have melee and range on your, or protect from magic and protect from range on your action bar. Also make sure, I did this before I went into the fight kiln, 
but before you do the jad fight if you have protect from magic and protect from range on your action bar make sure to press enter twice and then x out of the quick chat icon that spawns up and what will that will do is make sure your action bar doesn't glitch um, at least it gives your action bar a much lower chance of glitching because I know um, during my fight caves guide uh, my action bar glitched and I was trying to use prayers with the action bar and it didn't work luckily that did not end up killing me but at the same time uh, you just want to make sure you do that so you can use prayers in your action bar and also after every 10 waves and then a few times in the later waves you get a cutscene pretty much all he says every time is the lava is rising our monsters are coming to kill you you know stupid crap like that so again you can use the l-shaped rock you might notice that the landmass is starting to shrink a little bit that was a really cool effect i always liked the fact that the the landmass that you're standing on i guess you call it the fight kiln um... the lava rises in the fight kiln island that you're standing on gets smaller and then by the time you get to the boss fight you're just standing on this little tiny piece of rock i always thought that was really cool um... and then what was that mage crystal i believe no that was constitution crystal so the constitution crystal what that does is it, it it boosts your life points really really high and it heals you um, really fast so that one is pretty nice you can pretty much tank jads if you have the constitution crystal active again it's not really needed you don't need any of the crystals to do the fight caves um, I'd recommend maybe like taking the major range ones just to make the jad fights faster and then like the invulnerability crystal just to make the just to make it so you can use Dragors in the double jad fight and kill them in like 30 seconds or less. But um, So there's another invulnerability crystal. So if you want to use that during wave 34, that would be a pretty nice time to use it. Wave 34 and 35, um, which is there's a jad that you cannot safe spot against, and then there's the double jads. Um, those are the two waves where you really want to uh, use your invulnerability crystals because you get two of them throughout the entire cave. Um, so waves 20 through 29, no, 10, 11 through 19, I'm sorry about that, 11 through 19, they are all focused on mage creatures, so you want to, um, at the start of each wave, since there will be more magic creatures than anything else, you want to start with your magic gear out, so if you have your magic armor or whatever, and there's another restoration crystal, don't take it, leave it on the ground, please, do it, do not take it, I was a fool, I was a fool, but yeah, anyway, you just want to, um, Start each wave with your whatever your ranged weapon is. For me, it's a royal crossbow. For you, it might be, I don't know, even ascensions. If you have ascensions, I'll power to you. That's fine. You can use them. But I just decided to use a royal crossbow because, well, I also have chaotic crossbows, but I just decided to go with royal because it's pretty nice. Um, so having the obsidian armor is really nice because when you switch armors, all you have to do is switch helms. I'm sure that even in like melee armor or something, you could probably hit the monsters just fine with range because they have such low defense, let's be honest. You kill them in like four or five hits every time and you never ever splash. The obsidian armor does help with that, um, but at the same time, these monsters just do have really low defense. Um, and I was not wearing the Tokar, the Takulzo ring, so keep that in mind. That will help you hit even better if you have that. And then on wave... 17 there is the magic crystal there so if you want to take that you can um, again you really do not need most of these crystals at all you can leave almost all of them on the ground you can leave every single crystal on the ground and still do a, a fight killing just fine if that's what you want to do but anyway um, so we're getting pretty close to the second jad he's going to be coming up on wave 20 and we're on wave 18 right now um, so we'll get one more crystal before the jad fight which is going to be on wave 19 um, which is a ranged crystal, and we'll see our second dill this coming up wave as well. Um, so a lot of people have trouble with the dills. I'm not really sure why. Of course, when it comes to wave 28, where you have to fight the six dills, I will slow it down um, and show you guys exactly how to kill them. But uh, the dills are really quite easy. The first time I did a fight kill, um, I lost almost all my food on dills. I did not use any food on any of the waves. And then on the dill wave, I used like all my food, so that was kind of frustrating. Um, but anyway, when you see a whole bunch of monsters all of one kind, that's when you know that the Jad fight is going to come up next. Like for example, on wave nine, there's a whole ton of rangers. You know the Jad fight's coming up next. On wave nineteen, there's a whole ton of magic users. You know the Jad fight's coming up next, and a dill. I'm not really sure why they threw a dill on on wave nineteen. 
Again, uh, before the Evolution Combat Dread Nymphs were so good, and now they're so crap, and I kind of miss having Dread Nymphs. But Ranged Crystal there, you can pick that up if you want. It's really your preference. I wouldn't really recommend picking it up, because, again, I didn't use it. Didn't need it at all. I just used Magic against the Jads anyway. So, again, we slow down the clips here just to show you how I kill the Jad. It's pretty easy, pretty much the same way that I kill every Jad. Um, I like to use magic against them just because, you know, magic is overpowered. But, um, yeah, magic hits pretty well in the jazz. Range probably hits pretty well as well. But I was using the ability, I was actually having the magic ability book out because I wanted to have uh, both my melee and range abilities on one ability bar so I didn't have to switch between them because that was just what I wanted to do. Um, so with that in mind I had to actually physically bring out the magic ability book and put it on my screen and click on the abilities which was kind of annoying but you can always just switch between ability bars it's not that big of a deal I just didn't want to okay so we get another cutscene here and the lava rises a bit more um, and now you don't have the L-shaped rock anymore so you don't have a safe spot well not as good of a safe spot I should say so this next wave coming up here is pretty annoying just because there's like a billion little I'm not sure what to call them. I guess they're called Takar Hers, but yeah, they're just really low level melee creatures with uh, really low defense, and they're very easy to kill. There's just a lot of them, and it takes a while. So, I would recommend a sh Sunshine here again. Sunshine is one of my favorite abilities in the game. Um, I really like it, and I would recommend to use it as much as possible. So, it just speeds up the fight a little bit, and you'll see a little. I guess blip in the recording here and the reason for that is because I stopped the video and started the recording again and I do that because um, it keeps my it, it makes it a much lower chance that the recording would crash and I'd lose the file and I did not want to have to record another fight ca fight kill um, so you're gonna see mostly melee creatures from here until wave 30 so just keep that in mind you might want to start with your magic out your magic staff your magic water book whatever you got and just um, start with them at the start of each wave. Again, the melee creatures are nothing to worry about. They're very easy. Um, and you don't have anything to worry about at all until wave 28, which is going to be the Jad wave. So that's, or no, the Dill wave, and then wave 30 is the Jad wave. And then after wave 30, it gets a little more interesting. And so there's another Constitution Crystal. You can take that if you want. You really don't need it, but you can take it. And I was wrong. There's actually three Invulnerability Crystals that spawn um, during the caves. I said there was two earlier. I'm sorry about that. But um, there is another Invulnerability Crystal, which is going to be spawning in two waves. So you can pretty much be completely protected against the last three Jad Waves, if that's what you want to do. Um... And if you don't mess up like me and screw yourself with the crystals like I did by using that dumb restoration crystal. But anyway, um, on this wave, for some weird reason, there's like a whole bunch of rangers and majors and guys like that. But we are coming up pretty close to the deal wave. Um, if I had a dragon pickaxe, I would bring that. But the thing is, I sold my dragon pickaxe after I got 99 mining. Um, and I didn't really want to spend like 17 mil. And there's the invulnerability crystal. Do I take it? Take the invulnerability Unvulnerability crystal man. Okay, I ended up I, I ended up taking it, but the the rune pickaxe again works just fine for the dill wave, so you don't even have to worry about it. Um, but anyway, I the fight killing is pretty straightforward, pretty boring. There's nothing at all to worry about until wave 34 or so, um, because that's when you get jads for the next like three waves, two or three waves. I think it's three waves, and then after that you get uh, Harakin, which uh, I really don't like the Harakin fight, I'll just say that, it's way too long. Um, and I ended up uh, eventually giving in and changing over to a magic-based ability bar here, just because it was getting, getting too annoying to have to click on all of these monsters. But anyway, this is wave 27. So the next deal wave is coming right up, and you'll be able to see what I did. And uh, there will be another Restoration Crystal dropped on the ground. I was going to get it, and I'm like, nope, the deals are about to spawn. Don't. So stand where I'm standing. For some reason, a lot of guides tell you to stand in the middle. Don't do that. Just stand at the top northwest corner because there's only one dill that spawns there, and you can kill him quite easily. And then you can just go hunt the rest of the dills. So that's what I decided to do. Um, if you want to stand in the middle and like try to lure the dills around the rock, you 
go ahead and do that. It's just way easier this way. And I did get really lucky on this Dill fight because they did not special attack me much. Um, again, you don't want to use protection prayers against the Dills because if if you do, they will hurt you. Um, and you just want to break their shell with your pickaxe as fast as you can and then switch to Dragors. They are weak to melee for some reason. Just looking at a deal, it, does, it doesn't look like it would be weak to melee. But with that big shell, it doesn't really look like it would be weak to anything. But So it is weak to crush attacks um, or Dragors because everything is weak to Dragors for the most part. The reason why you want to be... I guess I never really touched on this much. The reason why you can't just Dragor escape the whole kill is because there's damage reduction... Um, so if a monster is weak to magic and you use melee against it, you'll be doing like half damage or something like that. So the first time I did a fight kill on Evolution Combat, I drag or escaped it all. It took like an hour and a half. And the reason why is just because it took so long to kill everything. But I was dumb and I didn't know about the damage reduction at that time. So yeah, you really want to make sure you bring all three combat styles. I'll just say that. But So I smashed the first... Here you'll fight um, two deals at once, which is fine. You can just lure one behind the other like I did there. Um, that makes it pretty easy. You can also like try to lure them around the rocks if you want. Again, there's not too much to worry about. I did do this dill wave with no food, which is the first time I ever did a dill wave with, with, dill wave with no food. So I guess I was kind of proud about that. But anyway, um, yeah, there's two more dills, six total in this wave. Um, again, they're pretty easy. You can lure them behind one another, which is what I chose to do for the final four dills. Or you could try to lure them around the rocks and kill them that way. It doesn't really matter. You will take a little bit of damage. Yeah, because you have to melee them to get their shells down in the first place. Um, but after that, you'll be fine. So there's two more deals here. I'm stupid. I don't know why my character is like derping out and just standing there. I know it was me that was derping out and staying there because I wasn't clicking on anything. But... So here's the final two deals. Um, and then after this, we're almost to the interesting part, guys. Believe me, we're almost to the uh, near the end of the fight kill where we start killing lots of Jads and killing Harakin and stuff like that. So I think that Soul Split, either I got really lucky or Soul Split does not affect the Jad special attacks. Um, I think it does, and I think it's just protection prayers that do. But um, they didn't special attack me more when I Soul Split, and they're supposed to special attack you more when you use prayer. I guess this still was weak to magic. I just saw that on my screen. So maybe some dills are weak to magic. I never knew that, but um, on the RuneScape wiki it said they're weak to crush. So either I'm lying or the RuneScape wiki is lying or the game itself is lying. I'm not sure, but wave 29, which is where you get a whole bunch of these guys, whatever you want to call them, the melee guys. I'm just going to call them the melee guys. I guess they're called Tukar Yit Mejkot. So if you want to try to pronounce that six times fast, go for it. But otherwise, um, the next wave, of course, is the Jad wave. And you will get a magic crystal at the end of this wave. So go ahead and take that if you'd like. Uh, if you don't want to take it, that's fine too. I won't argue with you. But um, with all the Jads, I don't know if you've been paying close attention, but for all the Jad waves except one, you start in this exact spot where I'm standing. Um, you can trap them all around the rock in the middle except for one jad wave which I'll show you pretty soon but so here is wave 30 and we'll get a cutscene after this wave but so come on heal the jad I'm taking way too long but yeah again it's just a jad very very easy to kill and I did pop a magic crystal before this fight so it took like five seconds to kill him so anyway yeah I just used a couple basics asphyxiate he's dead that's what happens when you use a magic crystal. You hit like constant 2.5k. So if you're curious about what the magic crystal does, that's what it does. It makes the jet fights take literally 10 seconds. That's kind of why I take them. But again, if you don't have the inventory space, don't worry about it. You don't really need food down here at all. Um, I did use a little bit of food. I'm ashamed to admit because I messed up, uh, which you'll see. But for the most part, once you get the fight kill and down and you don't make any dumb mistakes anymore, you will never ever need food if you ever need any healing like against the deal wave i guess you probably will need some healing on that um just use the guthix's blessing ability from the world wakes that's what i used to heal like the two times that i needed to heal um before wave 34 or 35 where i messed up it was one of those two maybe it was 35 but until wave 35 when i messed up i never needed any healing at all so i just used guthix's blessing 
And then uh, you get a ranged crystal there. Again, you don't need it. Don't really take it up. Don't pick it up if you don't have the inventory space. I mean, if you do have the inventory space, uh, you can go ahead and use the range. As you saw with the magic crystal there, it hits constant 2.5Ks. That's what it does with the range crystal, too. It makes you hit very, very high. So if you want to pop that on wave 34 or something, well, actually, um, if you still have your, like, invulnerability crystals and constitution crystals at this point, I would pop them on the final jad waves just to make sure you should have still three invulnerability crystals by this point. So, yeah, use them on the final three waves where you get jads uh, because on wave... 34 you'll get a jad on wave 35 you'll get a jad that you cannot safe spot and on wave 36 you will get two jads so if you use invulnerability crystals on all three of those waves which are coming up right now those that will make your life easier um, i guess just you're most likely not going to die on these waves anyway because it's it's just another jad it's no different than all the jads you faced before another strength cr crystal there that you probably will not use um, these are no different than the jads you faced before, so don't really worry about them. So here's wave 34. This is just another basic jad. Um, and he spawns on the other side of the rock this time, but the rock still safe spots against him. There's one jad that you could stand on the opposite side of the rock. All the other jads, if you stand on the opposite side of the rock, he can't hit you, but there's one jad that he can, So, which is on the next wave, and you guys will see that. So you can't safe spot him. But anyway, um, there's that jad. And I'll give you a tip for the next wave uh, that is actually really, really helpful. It's going to be kind of hard to explain just because it's not something I did in the video because I wasn't thinking of it at the time. And this was my first fight kill in a year. So I wasn't really, I didn't really remember how to do it. But I will give you a trick for the next video or the, the next wave and um, something that will help you kill the jad really, really easily. But anyway, that jad's done. So at the end of this wave, Put on your Dragors if you have them, or your Katakamala, whatever. Turn on Turmoil, and um, you'll see where the Jad spawns in just a second. You see how the Jad spawns to the, uh, what was that, the southwest or something? That place where the Jad spawns, you want to stand directly underneath him. And as soon as he spawns, you want to pop your Invulnerability Crystal. And then you want to just melee the Jad, and he'll die in a few seconds. So that's what you want to do. As you see, um, I had my screen stupidly turned away from the Jad, and I did not have my sounds on because I forgot what side of the cave that Jad spawned on. So here I also used the Restoration Crystal, which was a huge mistake because I was under the impression that the Restoration Crystal would heal you and your prayer like it's supposed to do, but it didn't. It did absolutely nothing, and it made it so I could not use any more crystals for the rest of the cave. So i not sure, again, if the Restoration Crystal is just heavily glitched or what, but it's supposed to heal you, and it does, and it didn't. So, again, do not use those Restoration Crystals, because they will screw you over as they almost screwed me over. Because I got hit by the Jad, and my first thought was, oh, I'll just pop a Restoration Crystal, I'll be fine. But my mistake that I made there is my I had my screen pointed away from the Jad, because I forgot what side of the rock the Jad spawned on. Um, so you just want to have your screen pointed toward him, toward him, and if you if he spawns on top of you, you'll have a few seconds to um, immediately use that invulnerability crystal, and then just go go to town on him with dragors. I think the invulnerability crystal lasts like 15 seconds, so that's plenty of time to kill the jad um, if you are meleeing. So that's what I'd recommend to do for that wave, and it'll just make your life a lot easier. But anyway, um, it's time for the double jads now. Oh yeah, double jads. You might think, holy crap, double jads, how am I going to do this? But it's really incredibly easy. You don't even have to worry about it all. No problemo. So you kill these pretty much the same way that you kill all the other jads. Um, you just save spot them behind the rock. Again, I'm not sure why the jad on wave 35, you can't do this. Because he was kind of in the same position that these jads are in behind the rock. But for some reason, he was able to hit me. So I'm not sure why that is. Just one of those weird aspects of the game. But I guess it does make Wave 35 a little more challenging. I would personally say that Wave 35 is the hardest wave out of any of them, but that's just me. Because you um, you have to immediately prayer switch to the second Jad spawns, which isn't too difficult to do. But eventually, I will come out of my hiding place here. I should have cut this out of the video. I'm sorry about that. But um, in a few seconds, I will. I was, what I was trying to do here is I was trying to pop the Invulnerability Crystal, but I can't do it because um, that stupid restoration crystal. Since I used the restoration crystal, it won't let me uh, use the invulnerability crystal. 
But anyway, um, as you saw, I just destroyed that jad there. It had no chance it died so fast. Again, these jads, like, they only have 10,000 health or something like that, 15,000 health, somewhere in that range. Much, much less than the jad in the fight caves has. So they're just so easy to kill. Um, and the next wave, of course, is Har Ekin. And I did, speed, I did speed up the Har Ekin fight. I know I slowed down the Dill wave and all the jad waves just to kind of show you guys what to do on them. But the Hara can fight, I did speed it up just because it's a really long fight and it's really, really, really boring. There's no chance of dying unless you're just a complete derp. But unless you are a complete derp, there, there's no way you're going to die in the Hara can fight because he barely does any damage. Um, I was stupid and I ate some sharks just because like I ran around killing tentacles for way too long. Um, but anyway... So he spawns a whole bunch of tentacles, and you want to kill these if you, I mean, you can kill them. You don't have to kill them. Um, but the tentacles will damage you a little bit. They don't hit very hard. They hit, like, 50s, uh, like, 50 hit splats. So, But you want to wait until Hare can, um pokes his head out of the water. He does this, I would say, after he dives underneath the water, it takes about 30 seconds to a minute. I'm sure there's actually a timer of exactly how long it takes for him to pop out of the water. Um, but again, if you're on your first fight caves ever, you're probably not going to be thinking about stuff like that. And I know I sure wasn't. Um, so if you get more, or I mean fight kiln, if you get more pro into fight kiln, um, you probably want to worry about stuff like that. But for now, it doesn't really matter. You just want to wait until his head pops out of the water. And I use Berserk there, so I hit a bit harder. Again, he has damage reduction against him with all combat styles, so it doesn't really matter all that much what you use. If you're not Zerk, you're going to be hitting like 500s and 600s with Dragors. Um, even with Turmoil and Overloads on, as you see, I'm turmoil I'm turmoil turmoiled and overloaded. Um, and I still, without Berserk, I only hit like 500s and 600s with, him again, with Dragors. And I was trying to use the Strength Crystal all throughout this fight, but I still couldn't use the Strength Crystal because of that Restoration Crystal wouldn't let me. So, anyway... Um, I think I did eventually use the Strength Crystal at, like, the very end of the fight. It finally let me use one or something like that. But, um, anyway, Harakin is almost dead. And he does get, he does, uh, act like a troll. And he does, of course, go underwater when he has, like, 1k life points left. Which was really annoying. But, anyway, I, it takes a while to kill him just because, for the most part, just because of this. Again, I Berserk here, which is really nice. I'd recommend to do that. Um, it takes so long to kill him just because he's a troll and goes under the water, but it's not a difficult fight at, by any means. Eventually, you might have to eat a little bit just because um, over time, these tentacles uh, wear down your life points a little bit. So if you want to use like a constitution crystal, you should have one of them left. Um, go ahead and do that, and what that will do is just heal you a ton. So our Aiken spawns right in front of me, and he's dead, and I have... I choose to get the kiln cape, even though I already have a kiln cape, I chose to get another one just so I could have a bank spacer for it, I guess. And also onyxes are only worth 3 mil, and I don't really need 3 mil, so um, I didn't really take the onyx. I guess you could do speed kilns. It took me 50 minutes to do this kiln, um, and you could definitely improve on that time a lot. Um, so, I mean, if you could get to, like, 40 minute kilns or so that would be like five mil an hour collecting onyxes so that wouldn't be bad and it's kind of fun to do so i guess speed kilning would still kind of be a viable way to make money um if you ever want to try that but anyway thanks for this guide and uh thanks for watching this guide and farewell